Hey guys, it's Amaya here back with another quick video and in this one we're gonna go over the topic of overconsumption of protein. So can you eat too much protein? And this is a question that I get a lot, so I wanna approach this from three different angles to solve all the most commonly asked questions related to this. So the angle number one will be, will you gain weight if you overconsume protein? So will overconsumption of protein lead to body fat gain? The point number two will be, what are some of the dangers? Are there any dangers of overconsuming protein in sense of like getting some kidney problems, liver problems, bone density issues, stuff that you read about in the mainstream fitness media? And the point number three that I wanna make is what are some of the practical implications of eating a higher protein diet? What should you be concerned with and how you can set up your diet properly? So let's start off with the number one. So number one, will you gain body fat if you overconsume protein? And the simple answer is yes. Obviously protein, same as other macronutrients, the fat and the carbohydrate has an energy amount. So it has about four calories per gram. What separates protein, making it a little bit harder to overconsume, is a very high amount of satiety and also the thermic effect of food is very high for protein. That means that to metabolize, to use that protein in your body, your body will actually have to expand more energy compared to carbohydrate and especially compared to fat, which has the lowest thermic effect of food. So that means that it's a little bit harder to overconsume protein, but it's not impossible, obviously, you know, it still has energy. And we could say that about three out of those four calories from a gram of protein will be used, can be used as energy if necessary. So the idea of that you can eat as much protein as you want and you will never ever gain any body weight or never gain any body fat is completely false. The energy equation still holds, so it is energy in versus energy out. It is calories in versus calories out. But a pro protein intake is a very good example of how the calories in will affect the calories out. And this is something a lot of people that argue against the calorie, the energy equation, they just don't understand. Basically, as you can see, if you eat a lot of protein coming calories in, the calories out will be higher as well because of that thermic effect of food. You will expand more energy through just simply processing that food. So keep that in mind. I mean, protein is definitely a bit harder to overeat with and get to get into that caloric surplus, but it's definitely possible. You know, the, the energy balance equation still holds. So Going to the point number two, so is there any damage associated to a higher protein diet when it comes to kidneys, liver, bone density, and any sort of that thing? So when it comes to kidneys specifically, this is one of the most commonly asked questions that I get. If you have normal, healthy kidneys, a higher protein diet hasn't shown to cause any damage whatsoever. So if you have a high protein diet, and if you have healthy kidneys, you shouldn't be concerned with that with da dangers, with damage, with any sort of that thing. So that's just simply a myth. However, if you have kidney issues, then you definitely want to consult your physician because the general recommendation is to reduce the amount of protein you're intaking to like a moderate or a low amount because it has been shown on damaged kidneys to speed up the process of that kidney function decline, right? So you wanna make sure that you really consult your physician if you have this issue, but if you're a healthy individual, then you should not have any problems. Same with the liver issues. So a lot of, I mean, the stuff that you see on the internet is like, oh yeah, higher protein diet damages the liver. I mean, if you look at studies with rats, you know, if you suddenly bump up their protein intake sky high, you know, there might be some liver damage there in rats, but I mean, in humans, hasn't been replicated so well. So, I mean, there's really nothing to be concerned of. And we're talking about crazy amounts of protein here. We're not talking about the usual recommendations that we're gonna get into for athletes and which are gonna be in the description below for you guys as well. So there's really nothing to worry about. And in terms of bone density, in terms of bone problems, higher protein diets have actually been associated with improved bone density. And they also allow you to retain much more mu muscle mass, which also helps with general health and with all the other functions as you age. I mean, definitely higher protein diets are win-win in all these scenarios if you're a healthy individual. Aside, if, aside from that, if you have any issues, obviously you wanna make sure to consult your physician if you have that and then try to find a person who has worked with athletes in the past, with athletes who have higher protein demands such as bodybuilders because then these physicians will know how to advise you properly. And the final point, what are some of the practical implications of a higher protein intake? Well, look, 
I mean, excess amount of protein can limit the amount of carbohydrate and fat that you're getting from your diet. And protein is not a very efficient energy source. So protein will actually have to be converted to glucose to be used as energy. So if you overconsume protein, so let's say you go to some crazy amount of protein, like, I don't know, four grams per kilo, then you're limiting the amount of carbohydrate and fat that you can be getting from your diet. And your body will basically have to have a lot of enzymes to metabolize that protein and to use it as energy, which is not necessarily something you want to train your body to do because you want to prevent muscle protein breakdown and protein breakdown in general as to get that positive protein turnover to get more muscle built, right? So you don't want your body to be using protein as energy. You want to provide that energy in form of carbohydrate and fat. So now the question is, well, is it higher carbs or is it lower carbs or is it higher fat, lower fat? Well, look, the data is pretty clear on this. So there's absolutely no difference between a higher carbohydrate and a lower carbohydrate that if protein is the same. So if the protein is kept the same, you will lose the same amount of body fat on a low carb or on a high carb diet. So that's pretty much clear by now. So it really comes down to calories in, calories out. Now, individual response will vary depending on your metabolic flexibility and all these other things, when you, how you feel and all these other things, but the energy balance equation holds. So make sure that that, pro, that protein is high in your diet for the sake of retaining and building new muscle mass, which is a which is an incredible thing you can do when you're losing weight because it will help you lose more weight. It's gonna help you improve that nutrition partitioning. It will help you build more muscle. You're gonna look better. You're gonna feel better. And, and you're basically gonna support a lot more function in your body uh, compared to a very low protein diet with low calories, which definitely, definitely has an impact where you lose a lot of lean body mass. You will lose a, the more total body weight, but you will lose muscle mass as well, which is not something that you want to do. So a lot more of that weight will come from muscle, which is simply, simply something that you don't want to do. You want to burn body fat. So when it comes to practical implications, how you can set up your protein intake? Well, look, the, there's a variety of intakes out, out there and a variety of different setups. Some people believe in ratios and percentages. I hate percentages. And here's a an simple example of why. So let's say I tell you, hey, you should be eating 30% of protein from your diet. And if you're consuming 2000 calories, that would be a one, 160 cal, uh, something around 160, right? So you, you consume uh, 150, 160 grams of protein. But let's say you're consuming 3000 calories, that intake is suddenly bumped up to 225. Do you need 225? Well, not necessarily, right? So basing your recommendations on percentages isn't the best idea you can because your caloric intake can vary and then again it will screw up your ratios when it comes to percentages. So the way you want to base your protein intake on is on the amount of lean body mass you have or the amount of target body weight that you want to achieve. So let's say your target body weight is 160 pounds and you say hey I'm going to consume between a gram per pound of target body weight to about 1.3 grams of target body weight. And that is something that is definitely a viable strategy because it's going to eliminate all those fluctuations because protein, I mean, let's face it, it's pretty consistent on a day-to-day -day basis. It's pretty consistent throughout the years, going a little bit higher, maybe in a cut when a very deep deficit to help you with satiety, also to help you retain as maximum amount of muscle mass as you can on a bulk, quote unquote, you can go a little bit lower in protein intake simply because you have an abundance of energy and your body will will not tap into muscle storage to break it down for energy. So you're sure of that. And then you can definitely go a little bit lower, but that's pretty much it, right? So there's not much confusion there when it comes to protein intake. You know, higher protein diets have shown long-term to be much, much more effective when it comes to retaining muscle mass, also combined with exercise. It, it really does magic when it comes to first losing the weight and then keeping it off, which is the biggest problem with a lot of people is just simply getting that uh, used to that new body weight and not binging back to their previous weight when they yo-yo diet and they just re regain all the weight. So with exercise and high protein, I mean, that's the magic formula. And again, as I said, you know, if you over consume protein, you will have to sacrifice carbs and fats, which is not the best idea for athletic performance, especially when it comes to higher intensity work, where carbohydrate plays a key role here in high intensity work and aerobic work, and typically gym training, stuff like sprinting, high intensity workouts. For that, you definitely wanna optimize that through higher carbohydrate intake. And for that, you don't wanna to go too much on protein because it will limit the amount of carbs you're gonna get in your diet. So hope you guys enjoyed a real quick video here on the, can you eat too much protein? 
made some of these uh, things clear. I'm going to leave all the research studies in the description below for you guys to check out and the links for you guys that are nerdy. So you want to <laughs> research a little bit more on that. So that's going to be in the description below. Aside for that, make sure to hit that subscribe button below to support the channel. If you have any questions, as always, make sure to hit up in the comments below and read all the comments as usual. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.